let's come back to studio, continue talking about uh, some of the political developments we've seen in the recent past. And with me in studio, just to introduce my guest who we had in the last hour on my extreme right, is Patrick Munene Cairo. He's seeking to be the governor of Nyeri County uh, with the Democratic Party of Kenya Party. And also next to me is Dr. Jambo Undo, who's candidate ODM for Nyula Constituency, Busia County. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with us. Before we move on to other matters, uh, before we went on break, we're talking about just some of what we're hearing from the uh, two main uh, coalition and party. Jubilee talking about winning this election of 70%, uh, which some have translated to mean about 12 million, and NASA saying they are confident of 10 million. What do you make of those numbers? Um, thank you once again. Uh, I believe uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta will uh, command an overwhelming uh, uh, majority of the votes, and the uh, reason being because uh, he has achieved uh, significant uh, development in Kenya uh, within that short period of four years. Uh, you know, he will not be going for the full calendar of five uh, uh, years exactly, but what he has been able to achieve within that time and uh, against the odds uh, of uh, even how his presidency began, uh, he had to battle the ICC case and uh, uh, after that was completed, we've seen within a record uh, about two and a half years, uh, he has been able to uh, uh, launch quite a number of uh, uh, development projects. And let me interject there. You talk about a lot of what he's conquered. He began with the ICC, and he did say it was a personal matter. So for yes. Kenyans, they don't view that as a victory. But more importantly, you're talking about development projects. All right, they've highlighted many of those. But right now we're talking of an UNGA crisis. Yes. So people will not enjoy development if they're hungry. That, you know, you're talking about 180 shillings for 2 kg pockets. So isn't that a huge indictment on his leadership that even when others come and say, uh, at the end of the day, to feed the people, that should be top of the list if I had any other development project? Um, I, I don't look at it as an indictment because uh, we've had crop failure, I think, uh, about two seasons. And uh, that is what has led to, to the problems that we have today. And uh, when you look at projects such as, as uh, the Galana Irrigation Project, uh, those are some of the projects which are uh, quite huge and uh, they were supposed to address some of these issues. And they have just got out of the pilot stage where they piloted about uh, 10,000 acres of the 1 million acres that are supposed to be put under irrigation. And uh, now they're moving on to the next phase, which will then now enable this country to, to, to get enough buffer uh, or, or in terms of food reserves. So I, I wouldn't look at it as an, you know, an act of God, uh, because we had rains uh, failing and so on. Uh, we cannot then say that uh, President Uhuru has failed. If you look actually, if you look, if you look actually yeah. at the projects to do with water, uh, there are several projects uh, for irrigation or water harvesting, major dam projects. Like in uh, Nyeri, we have two projects, and, and these projects are all over the country. Uh, this, these are the pro projects which are going to address, because we need to move away from rainfall agriculture to irriga irrigation. And uh, to do irrigation, you must have water. So we have to build these reserves now. Uh, of course, you cannot build a dam overnight, and uh, you cannot deploy... Uh, uh, irrigation uh, infrastructure overnight. But the fact that it has started uh, will not be able to, to, to say that uh, we have, or President Uru has not done what he's supposed to do. Uh, if we look now with the importation of maize and so on, this is a stopgap because uh, the situation is there. We, we don't have enough reserves. And, uh, we, but which we knew as measures. early as January, yes. and the concern here, allow me to press further before I come to you, sir, is it's not a breaking story. It's not something that just happened, that there was no maze, and so we are caught in a situation. They are acts of God, but they don't also just unfold. You see them coming. There are people, experts, paid to see these yes. things coming. Yes. And so for the government to even early on in January talk about having then identified Mexico uh, as one of the countries that would be able to you know, uh, bring in those numbers in as far as uh, the bags of maize to fill up the shortages we were going to face and here we are treating it as if it just happened. No, actually that's not the case because uh, I'll take you back to Galana. If you remember I think around February they released the consignment of maize which, which they had harvested from the pilot phase and uh, this was offloaded into the market and uh, like I said this was a pilot project. It was, it's a major project but it was at a pilot phase and uh, they had to release 
this and from the analysis, the soil, soil analysis, the, the crop analysis, they have been able to identify and say now we can push on. We can do another two, three hundred, four hundred thousand acres uh, under irrigation and uh, and be able then to to, to uplift our stocks. Mm. So we cannot say that uh, the the government of President Uhuru Kenyatta just sat back and and waited. No, because uh, the food which came out from Galana was released uh, into, into 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 the market. Yeah. Yes. Are you satisfied with uh, the response you're hearing this morning? Uh, truth be told. The Jubilee government has underperformed. On the basis of the pledges they made to the people in 2012 and 2013 when they were campaigning, they have been a major, major letdown. Mm -hmm. Listen to most political pundits and political analysts, we see everybody seems to agree, probably to put it the way PLO Lumumba put it in some TV station, on a scale of 0 to 10, probably 3, to four will be the score. Fine. Besides that, probably the most uh, pressing issue now is the food, high food, uh, high prices of food. Mm -hmm. And I want to disagree with my colleague here, is that as, uh, as everybody has said and have mentioned it, it has not just have happened. We have seen it coming for a long, long period of time. It's unfair to blame God for things that was within our powers to correct. In this country, the cycle of drought and famine is now becoming predictable. Of course, the question everybody is asking, what did the Jubilee government do to forestall or mitigate the impact of the drought and the subsequent famine? Mm -hmm. They sat back waiting to, take, to make money from the importation and the high food prices to make money probably for campaigns or other activities. Honestly speaking, they have just uh, made it happen deliberately. Yeah. yeah. That is a growing perception, sir, that this is a crisis that was made to benefit a few. Uh, and even memes going around, I don't know if you saw one, you know, of the DP and, and, and you know, saying that when he talked about Mexico, it was maize eco. Mm -hmm. It's become something that perception is, this is something that could have been averted early on, but it has been made to enrich a few. And Kenyans um, continue to suffer in the... I, I, I don't think I, I would want to, to buy that argument. And just like I've stated, uh, number one is, are there irrigation um, projects underway? Yes, they are there. And step number one is to harvest water. And harvesting this water is the creation of the construction of uh, these mega dams, which will then facilitate um, large-scale uh, irrigation schemes to, to take place. Uh, has Galana reached a phase where now they can move away from pilot to project implementation? Yes, they have. They have identified, they have analyzed soil, they know which uh, uh, seed type is going to give us the highest yield. So has something been done? Definitely something has been done. And when, when uh, I say that uh, we had about two crop failures, uh, because we were still relying and we are still relying on rain-fed uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. And what the, uh, the government of President Uru Kenyatta is trying to do is to address that by ensuring we have a long-term solution uh, by taking us into uh, irrigation uh, type of uh, agriculture. Yeah. Yes. And yet you talk about this, the Galana project, and it's not being rolled out now. It's something that has been in the pipeline for a while. So still, to many, as you talk about the progress and that some things have been done, it's either a miscalculation or a calculation, as I asked earlier, uh, that uh, some would say really does not put the interest of ordinary Monanchi first. Uh, again, for Galana is, is analysis, because yeah. you cannot say that uh, with all these irrigation projects coming up, uh, the government needs to be able now to give advice, with authoritative advice based on scientific data, which will be coming out from uh, the Galana analysis over that period. Mm -hmm. This is a project which uh, will enable us then now move completely and become reliant 
on irrigation and probably even lead us to become a surplus nation in terms of uh, food production. Right. Yes. And we're hearing the deputy president, we heard him say that uh, it's not the first time Kenya is having to uh, bring in maize and is in such a situation and give citation of three other periods uh, of time it happened even under the grand uh, coalition. So he's saying why should Jubilee be subjected to criticism that has seen previous administrations with win which we had some of the leadership in NASA part of and criticized Jubilee for expediency. Did they want a bad situation to continue uh, and as far as the maize coming in so fast at least in this particular period from when that legislation was passed? See, if that is a defeatist approach, you are a leader, you are supposed to learn from the past. If we are still going back to the past, then we are not progressing. We are actually retarding. Mm -hmm. They knew very well when they came to power that Kenya is a generally a food insecure country. What efforts have they done? What plans have they done other than basic firefighting to make sure we do not have this problem? They promised the country 1,000, is it 1 million acre of, of land and irrigation. We can say without doubt, it's zero. Surely, even the, Gal, the uh, Galana project, it's inconceivable that a government can roll out a project without having done prior site investigation, soil tests, and all these things. If you go even to the government documents and archives, these tests were done. Mm -hmm. They were really not interested eh, in rolling out this project. Probably they did not find best, better means or ways of rolling out this project to their benefit. It does it take a whole four years eh, to pilot. A crop, a maize crop, generally takes six to seven months to mature. So we should by now be almost at full production. Mm -hmm. Surely it has been four, ma four years. That's almost about eight crops. Tell us another story that seems to be a fairly <laughs> an escapist story. Yeah. It's pure PR, nothing else. All right, nothing else. Before we continue uh, with other news, let me take you back to a press conference as well we heard earlier from the Kenya National uh, Commission on Human Rights and uh, the chair there was talking about the party primaries that were conducted last month and some of their recommendations. One of the issues she spoke about was Chapter 6 and arguing that some of these leaders that have been cleared do not uh, pass that test. You are both seeking elective positions. Uh, I'll put that first to you. In terms of Chapter 6, do you think that law uh, has completely been watered down because when you look at the standards to which it used to be upheld early on, like the departure of the then Deputy Chief uh, Justice, you know, it was swift and that is what was used. Chapter 6, the act was unacceptable. But when we look at the political scenario, the circus there, that would be considered child's play. So do you think that uh, this Chapter 6 is something that um, has completely been uh, destroyed? Um. I think Chapter 6 is important, and uh, I, I would not say it has been watered down, but uh, like you know with the law is that every person who is perceived either to have committed a crime is, is uh, innocent until proven guilty by a court of law. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot then go towards a direction of mob justice. But that said, we have definitely certain characters who do not warrant to hold office. and. Uh, and uh, some of them uh, either issues have not yet come out, and they're going to come out during the, the, the campaigns where we'll be saying uh, Governor X or Senator X or uh, MPY uh, has certain uh, historical issues uh, uh, in which then makes him not fit the bill of uh, uh, Chapter 6 on integrity and the like. But um, I think it has not been watered down up to now, and... Uh, as much as some of them will try to hide uh, behind that, uh, it doesn't mean that it will not catch up with them. It's mm. definitely going to catch up with them. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you agree with that in the, as far as Chapter 6 is concerned? Because there are many who look at it, and especially when it comes to the political scenario, that there are double standards. When it comes to politicians, as long as you have money to wiggle your way out, you will survive in these smoky waters. Uh, for sure. If you look at the wordings in the Constitution of Chapter 6, and you look at the enabling legislation, they are miles apart. Chapter 6 is very clear on what is expected of a leader, 
but when the, the Enabling Act was enacted, it watered down those provisions to fit, as you clearly said, everybody has said, yeah. political, to benefit politicians I'll, in allow different... Me, sir, because, sorry to interject. We need to take our viewers to Mombasa for a press uh, briefing that's currently ongoing by PS Transport, uh, Paul Mwangi. Let's listen in. What are the maize? It was brought in here within five days. This fresh maize, well stored. And gentlemen and ladies, this is white maize, not yellow maize, eh? white maize, for the avoidance of doubt. Eh? This maize was imported um, comparatively through private importers. All right, we have Kitui flour mills that has imported 10,000 tons. Pembe flour mills has imported 10,000 tons. And High Dairy P Limited, 9,900 tons. The reason why I give this specific information, all right, is to dissuade any Kenyan from, you know, from the speculation that government is doing business within itself. This is not my private company. Eh? These are publicly known companies. Eh? Gitui Floor Mills, Pembe Floor Mills, and Hydari. And then to be able to expand the market chain so that every Kenyan benefits, even in the process of importation. The millers so far that have so far bought 5,000 tons as we continue to pump it out through um, a grain bulk handlers, who's also another private sector player, we have um, a alpha grain millers location in Atiriva. That means that um, uh, uh, um, GBHL is pumping it out into its silo and pumping it, pumping it, sorry, pumping it into its silos from the ship and out into the loaders, eh? into the trucks. So we have 11,486 bags of maize, each 90 kilo, kilograms, going to alpha grain millers in Atiriva, already collected, another distribution. Eastern Floor Mills Limited, location Machakos, 1,594 bags of maize. And on and on to the last one, Pembe Floor Mills Limited, in a destination Nairobi with 28,124 bags. So really, this is a brief storyline about the importation, that now that we have the license to import, and um, uh, we also have consideration of the KPA about a taxation, no Kenyan is going to starve until our, our natural crop produce is back on track. Eh? Your questions? Maswali? Sorry? When the prices will come down from the current uh, prices, mm -hmm. and, uh, how many have you passed so far? Uh, how many bags have you dispatched? Fine, fine, the number of bags you dispatched. As I've said, we've received 300 bags so far in the last three days. We've so far been able to dispatch Two thirds or three quarters of that. Eh? That means 200 bags. Eh? They are already out with the sawmillers. Eh? And I've read it out. They are out with the sawmillers in Mombasa, in Atheriva, in Machakos, in Nairobi. So the, the, the market chain is working. Eh? Now, stabilization of prices, market forces respond very quickly. Eh? All right, eh? because the prices must have gone up because of scarcity. Now we are floating all this maize into the market. Clearly, it will go at competitive rates. Eh? So I'd expect a very quick turnaround. Eh? Yes. There is no yellow maize. There's no yellow maize. Eh? All of it is white maize. This is just speculation. Eh? I'll give you my written report. And re really, it's important for us to verify information like this from the right sources. Eh? The, man, the, the MD Kenya Post Authority, KPA, or his representative is in here. You want to access their offices, their government offices. Eh? If you want to access the manifest from the ship, because all this information is declared in there. It's nothing to hide. Eh? It's white maize from Mexico. Eh? Yes. Another question? Sorry? To buy the maize. We, can we defer that question to the KPN? They're here, they'll answer it. All right? Yes? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, and I know why you're asking that question, because people will say they're getting rotten maize. Eh? Remember, a crop is fresh from when it's harvested. All right, eh? Now, in the old traditional days, eh? You keep that maize for three days, it goes rotten, isn't it, eh? But now, the world has modernized. We have ways of storing maize, if you like, even for five years, eh? All right? And it still remains fresh, eh? This maize was ordered from Mexico a year ago. It's been in storage in South Africa. It's fresh maize, all right? Modern methods of storage, eh? So again, it's no point speculating on that. Eh? It's fresh maize. Eh? So, yeah. 
the maize is from Mexico. It was grown in Mexico. Do, do you know how ships operate? Eh? You have big ships hanging around in the ocean. Eh? It's business. Eh? Looking for places to sell, um, to sell maize. Eh? So the maize was imported from Mexico into South Africa under storage. Eh? All right, eh? and then we are picking it up from there. And that's why we are able to order and get it within five days. Eh? Daban is not far from where we are. Eh? Yes. Yes. I think on the same question, yes. what Kenyans are not really understanding yeah. is that um, KRA removed duty mm. on this base, yeah. any importation on 4th mm. of May. Yeah. Then on 10th of May, mm. the base arrived, mm. about six days. Mm. So people are wondering... Why it's taken that long? Why it's taken that yeah. long? And if this base was in South Africa then yeah. Then yeah. last year, why is it coming now? Well, we don't import maize when we don't need it, eh? You understand? All right, that's uh, Patrick uh, Mwangi, who is a PS, Ministry of Industrialization, Enterprise and Development. Uh, the port, uh, I believe that is, in Mombasa. Uh, well, Francis Ontoma will be joining us later, but just a quick highlight of what we've been able to hear from him. They're adamantly stating that the maize is not yellow. It is white. It's from Mexico. And uh, the market chain is working, talking about uh, the fact that this was private, were private importers that brought in uh, the maize, uh, reiterating that it's not government doing business within itself. Uh, that uh, so far, the market chain working in several counties, uh, this has been taken to in areas other than Mombasa. You have Athi uh, River, Nairobi, amongst others, that he's been able to mention have received the maize, saying it's also fresh, it is not rotten. And I, I just want to bring it back to studio and my guest to with me talk more about this maize crisis. And of course, we're hearing the government and seeing what uh, they're coming out to say. We talked about, a little, uh, about it a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, but what do you make of the sentiments you're hearing today? Of course, as we have always said, Jubilee government has been good at PR. For sure, it beats, it, I mean, it does not just make sense. You are aware we are having a maize shortage. The maize has just been rotting in some stores in South Africa. All over, now that the prices have gone up, the margins are likely to be good. Whoops, it arrives. It does not really, it does not sound good. Mm. There is an element of misuse of position, abuse of office. Remember the maize scandal? of 2008, 2009, the same, same players are now where they all they could be making a kill out of it. Were some of your leaders not allegedly involved in that? Yes, they were, but you know where they are now. They are no longer in the ODM mm -hmm. side. Okay. Your final thoughts as we close the show? Uh, my final thoughts on, the, on uh, just what we've uh, watched uh, about the maize issue. Uh, I would like to just differ and correct that we have a very elaborate public procurement procedure and uh, there is no way that maize could have been ordered uh, overnight. Uh, so the, the procedure had been followed. Uh, the advertisements were done and, and uh, those who secured the bid then went to source for, for the maize. And as we have heard, the maize is white. Uh, I think uh, the, 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 the PR has been coming from the side of, uh, uh, of NASA saying that uh, we are getting ye uh, yellow maize. Uh, how did they know that? And this is when the offloading is being done. Two, three days ago they were saying we were speaking about yellow maize. Uh, but uh, just my commentary is, has the government done its bit? Yes, it has. And that is, for example, why we have that maize. And uh, the other issues to do with agriculture, I will not belabor them, but uh, even if you go to counties like uh, uh, where I come from, Nyeri County, we have two mega dams uh, under, underway, and uh, the process has been long. We've been chasing and to have these tenders awarded and uh, you know, see that the projects are starting. And these are projects which are then going to uh, harvest a lot of water and then uh, be pushed towards uh, major irrigation schemes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of agriculture, this is the right direction we are going. It's going to take a bit of time to do the dams in various places here across the country and then roll out the irrigation infrastructure. But after that, I don't think we shall be having uh, more problems uh, to do with uh, food shortage and, and the high prices. All right. Patrick Munene Cairo, Democratic Party of Kenya, seeking to be Nyeri County 
uh, governor also with us this morning has been Dr. Ojambo Ondo, who is a candidate in the ODM party for Nyala constituency.